something we mentioned there was policy. And with living standards dropping, inflation rising, and the state taxing and spending, things are all starting to look a little bit like the bad old days of the 1970s. Well, what can be done about all of that? With me now is Christopher Snowden, the head of the life of lifestyle economics at the Institute of Econo- Economic Affairs. Welcome to the program, Chris. Um, first of all, should we have seen inflation coming? The Bank of England suggesting that inflation will peak at over seven percent now. Should we have seen it coming? Yes, and a lot of us did see it coming. We at the Institute of Economic Affairs have been warning, this, warning about this for for eighteen months. Um, it's not really rocket science if you pump the amount of printed money into the system that we have done in the last two years um, because of COVID-19, it's very, very likely that you're going to see inflation. It's not quite as simple as saying that money printing always creates inflation. You know, it's printing too much money that creates inflation. And uh, it seems that we have printed far too much money, as indeed they have in the USA, where inflation is already 7%. So I think 7% here is a perfectly reasonable uh, prediction, but no one really knows. And no one knows whether it's going to be transitory or not. But no, as recently as last May, the Bank of England was still saying that we were looking at around about 2% inflation for the foreseeable future, which, which, by which I meant like, in the next two or three years. So they got it disastrously wrong. I don't know why. It seems to me the Bank of England isn't that bothered about inflation. Um, but yeah, lots of people saw it coming. It is extraordinary that responding to these inflationary pressures, particularly around energy bills, as we heard from the Chancellor yesterday, is yet more state spending. Billions of loans to energy companies, um, uh, money given to councils to give people rebates as well. Is the answer to inflation, is this, is this, a, is this a counterproductive measure? Spending more through the state uh, to, try and cor- to try and combat rising prices. Surely that's, that's just a, a horrible, horrible spiral that we could enter into. Yes, it, it- it, it, it doesn't make any sense because this is largely but not entirely a problem of the government's own doing. The government has been really effectively trying to push up energy prices in its efforts to combat climate change. We could be using the gas from under the ground in Britain, but they've effectively banned fracking. We could be using nuclear power, but it was a decision made effectively many years ago not to build very many nuclear power stations and to let the ones that we have got be dismantled. So we have high energy prices for a, re- a number of reasons that directly result uh, the result of government policy. And now the policy is to try and patch over that rather than try and bring the cost down, just to give people money. Where's that money coming? Going to come from? Um, it'll certainly be borrowed, if not printed. You know, last month alone we borrowed seventeen billion pounds, uh, of which eight billion was interest on the debt. So you know, it was always a myth that this, this was cheap money. The interest payments are high, and they're going to get higher and they're going to need at some point to, in fact, they already are talking about and and introducing new taxes. But, you know, the tax take is going to go up unless the government gets a grip on this. It seems like we're living through an extraordinary period of political consensus. The Prime Minister and the Chancellor not being that far away from the Labour Party in terms of their ideas of higher taxes and more state spending uh, in order to, to combat the problems that we're seeing. Is there any chance finally in this conversation? of a change of political culture around these questions? Well, to some extent, it's what people want. I mean, I'm one of the tiny minority of people who think that the NHS is an overpriced killing machine and should be dismantled and privatised. But the vast majority of the population don't think that at all. They think the NHS is absolutely wonderful. And the only problem with it is it needs more money. Well, it's getting more money. It's had more money. Um, It's got a lot more money now. um, But that has got to be paid for. So given that we've surely reached the limits how much more money we can print, and we're already seeing the inflationary effects of that, it makes sense that if people want to spend more on the NHS, they're going to have to pay for it. So we've got a tax coming in now in April that will uh, have an effect on people's cost of living, but they'll get what they want for. They're outside clapping for this um, overrated institution. They, They wanted more money for it. They've got to pay for it. Well, Chris Snowden, it's a view. It's a view. I'm not sure that many people watching would necessarily agree that the NHS could be dismantled. Perhaps it could be a lot more efficient. Um, but, but thank you anyway for your contribution there. It is an extraordinary situation that we're living through. And you're quite right that the Institute of Economic Affairs was much better than the Bank of England at seeing this inflationary trap coming down the road. Chris Snowden, thank you for joining us.